Hello friends, welcome back to Cosmopolitan Cornbreads. So today here in the kitchen, I'm just gonna be talking about something that I've gotten a lot of questions about and I actually just got something in the mail which was what made me remember that I've been getting a lot of questions about this. Um, back when we began our kitchen renovation, which is kind of still ongoing a little bit, one of the things that I did was I hung my cast iron here on the wall and this particular cast iron is a brand called Smithy and I just got another piece of it, came in the mail today. Um, and so I wanted to share a little bit about this. Now cast iron, if you take care of it, it will last you a lifetime. It'll last more than a lifetime because you can pass it on to the next generation, to your kids, your grandkids. As a matter of fact, my very first piece of cast iron came from my grandfather. Um, it was his skillet that he used over the campfire in on his fishing trips, his hunting and trapping trips up in the North Woods in Wisconsin. And, you know, that has always been one of my prized possessions. Um, I, I had that before Mr. Smith and I ever even met. Pretty sure it was, it was part of my um, hope chest back in the day. If, if those in the younger generation may not even know what a hope chest is. But back in the olden days, um, young ladies would begin acquiring the things that they would need to um, manage their home. They would um, have things for the kitchen, they would uh, make linens and quilts and things like that and put it in a chest and it was like their hope for the future when they were someday have their own home. Um, and so that is what I did. When I was still in high school I began slowly every every paycheck I would buy some things, I would visit yard sales, I would look at store sales and things like that. And when Mr. Smith and I met and got married, um, I had just about everything that I needed to run a simple, <laughs> bare bones, but complete kitchen. Um, I had towels, I had linens, I had uh, most of the things that you needed to get by with. Um, and one of those things was my grandfather's cast iron skillet. But that brings me to this. Now, I do have a lot of cast iron. I've bought pieces new. I've bought pieces used from antique stores. Now, you do want to be careful um, buying pieces from antique stores. This is something that not a lot of people know, but um, way back when, uh, when people used to make their own ammo, a lot of times old cast iron would be used to melt lead um, for making ammo. And so it, it's kind of a good idea if you are buying old pieces um, from an antique store or thrift shop or something like that to get a lead testing kit. That way you can um, do a little swab sort of thing, make sure there's no lead contamination in your cast iron um, because ca old cast iron can be great, but there is that risk. So, uh, you know, having a, a lead testing kit, it, it's uh, just a few dollars. You can get them off of Amazon. It, it's nice to have one of those for in case you ever need one. But that brings me to this. Now, all of these pieces that you see here and the brand new piece that just came in the mail today is from a company called Smithy and they are in Charleston, South Carolina. I was first introduced to the Smithy cast iron in Alabama when we still lived there several years ago. There was a store that I found called Ashley Mercantile in Cullman. And I love that place. It is probably my favorite store in Alabama. Anytime I needed to buy a gift for somebody, I went to, to Ashley Mercantile in Coleman. And a few months after I had found that store, I actually interviewed the owner, super friendly gentleman. Um, he, he did the interview. I took you on a tour of the store. And this was, you know, back then. And, and at the time, their store was actually still really new. Now, if you would like to watch that interview and, and see the tour of the store back then, 
Um, I will put a link to it in a card up here or in the video description down below. But I do have a clip from that video where the owner um, talked about this Smithy cast iron. And so I'm gonna share that little clip right here. Mm -hmm. So Smithy cast iron is made in Charleston, South Carolina. It's made here in the United States. And it is really, really, really pretty. It is beautiful. And small batch. And so on the inside, um, it's made the way they made cast iron over 100 years ago. It's smooth to the touch. So you're already starting out with a smooth surface, which will enhance that non-stick aspect of mm -hmm. cast iron. They're pre-seasoned. Um, they'll start out like this, and that sheen is from how they season it. They hand and machine polish it before it leaves. I will say this, though. The more you use it, the less it's gonna look like that because we <laughs> we have two pieces of Smithy cast iron at home. Mm -hmm. Ours don't look like that because we use them oh, every day yeah. and it will eventually patina to that handle color, which is gonna be that darker color. Mm -hmm. um, they have a, a pretty wide offering of pieces from an eight inch chef skillet, which is rounded up to a double handled 14 inch traditional skillet. Mm -hmm. um, they have a Dutch oven and then something that they came out with might have been in 2018 right before Christmas um, they have these pieces here and so these are carbon steel this is all hand hammered by a blacksmith so this is a limited run of items that you can get so it takes longer for them to make um, and this is their farmhouse skillet uh, you're gonna get a very comparable cooking um, experience as you would with cast iron, it's gonna be non-stick. You still have to season it. But the cool thing is, like my mom, she's not a big person. She's maybe five foot. This number 12 inch skillet is 60% of the weight of that traditional cast iron skillet. So like I myself could not hold that number 12 out like this. It's mm -hmm. just too heavy in the- Start getting the muscle failure. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> quickly, quickly. So they have the farmhouse skillet and then they also came out with an open roaster that we have here. Mm -hmm. um, it's not, gonna be something that's a cheap investment yeah. but you know we're so conditioned to buy more or less cheap crap nowadays and you buy it over and over and over again mm -hmm. that's how the companies nowadays make their money oh yeah. you know I mean they, yeah. they want to get as many turns in just like I do but you're yeah. you're sacrificing that quality of the product yeah but and on this personally myself when I, when I buy something and it's not gonna last I'm not buying that again mm -hmm. I'm gonna go to their competitor that's right so to me it's not it's counterproductive exactly. in my mind. Sure, and but a lot of times people don't have that, that thought process. Yeah. But we try to have that thought process because once you get past that $35 mark here, nine times out of 10, it's gonna be heirloom grade goods that if you take care of it, you can pass it down. Yeah. And right. on, on this, this uh, cast iron, I mean, it takes a special person to jack up some cast <laughs> iron. And even then, it may take us a little bit, but we can get it back. Yeah. You can to save where, it. You can save it. Yeah. And so, you know, this is an investment and the guy who owns the company will tell you, say, hey, this is, this is stuff that's gonna last. Mm -hmm. And like for me personally, with a six year old and a four year old, this stuff is meant for my kids' grandkids. Long after I'm gone, they're still gonna have our stuff. And that's what, you know, with yep. the brownie pan, that's what kind of started it all. So mm -hmm. I'm a little bit more sentimental to stuff like this because you think about like my dad's mother, my grandma Ashley, mm -hmm. the wood bowl that's on top of a block that she's got her flower in, her mm -hmm. white lily flower and her sifter. And that's where she sifts her flour mm -hmm. before she makes her nest and she makes her biscuits. Mm -hmm. And her hands come out looking like mine right now when she's done. <laughs> I come out looking like a flower bomb went off, you know? <laughs> but the reason I say that is that bowl, I've never seen another one because I'm 35. Mm -hmm. It's because it was her great grandma's. Oh. Mm -hmm. And so stuff like that, you can't put a price on it. No. There's, I mean, there's no amount of money that could justify what that thing is worth. Yeah. And so, you know, in the South, there's a lot of people who have grandmas or great grandmas cast iron or whatever, mm -hmm. somebody in the family. Yep. That's great. If you don't though, this is your opportunity to make sure that you're gonna buy and, something. And start it. Yeah, start it. Because I mean, this is heirloom grade of heirloom grade. And they're super great to work with. Um, everybody that we've sold to has always been ecstatic when they leave with it. It's not a thin wall cast iron and so once you get it to that temperature that you need it at, it's very efficient at staying there. Mm -hmm. And like if you threw some steaks in this 14 to pan sear it before you put it in the oven, 
it's so beefy that it's gonna hit back on that meat. The temperature is not gonna drop, so you don't have to leave it on there longer than, mm -hmm. than you should, which then entail kind of compromises the quality of the meat mm -hmm. because you're cooking it too long for what yep. you should be doing. And mm -hmm. so um, it is an investment. We are one of three people in the state of Alabama who carry uh, Smithy and we have people drive an hour to come see it in person which is crazy <laughs> but it is uh it is pretty neat. now in addition to the cast iron you may have seen some pieces there that looked hammered that is their amazing hammered carbon steel line i do not have any of those pieces i do hope one day um, to have one of those there's there's a particular one called I believe it's called the farmhouse skillet Every time I see that it is just something I drool over it is a thing of beauty <laughs> and I oh I would love to have that but you know I, I wanted to share about this smithy cast iron because it is really really good quality cast iron I have, I have, like I said, I've got a lot of pieces of cast iron. I've got loaf pans and, and all sorts of things. But one of the biggest differences between this cast iron and the most of the other cast iron that you find, and I'm going to grab one of my other pieces and just kind of show you a comparison. Now this is a little skillet, short-handled skillet, that I've had for a few years now. And I've used it a lot. You've seen it in videos. You've seen me baking in it. I, I've used it for a lot of things. But even though it's been very well used, one of the things that you'll notice right away, and, and you might be able to see it in the reflection here or, or where, the, where the light is shining, but I'm going to take my fingernail and I'm going to rub across it. And what you hear, and you can kind of see my finger catching on it, is there's texture. And I apologize if that sounds like, you know, nails on a chalkboard. <laughs> but even though I have used this many times, it should be very well seasoned and, and almost non-stick. It's still got that texture in it. It's going to take many years for this to be smooth and, and just non-stick as though you've used it for a hundred years. However, this piece right here, it's never been used. I just took it out of the box. When I rub my fingernail across it, it's completely smooth. It is smooth as can be. It's smooth as though it's been used every week for a, a hundred years by your great, great granny. It's amazing. So this is the fifth piece of this Smithy Ironware that I have, um, that I've gotten, and I have a few other pieces. I'll just go ahead and show you the pieces that I have. So this is their 10 inch skillet, their, their number 10, you can see there. And this was the first piece that I got. I got it there at Ashley Mercantile, and I, I got this one because this is the skillet that I use the most. And you can see now, brand new, the Smithy Cast Iron has this gorgeous bronze color. And that comes from um, how it is, how it's seasoned and how it's finished and polished. The outside of it also has kind of an antique sort of bronze color and it does keep that color but the cook surface will darken it will um, season like any other cast iron as a comparison you can see this one which i have used a lot how dark it is it, it is a this is a very well seasoned skillet it's gotten very dark it, it is still smooth as glass and it's my most used skillet the number 10. Then I've got my bigger one here. This is this is the number 12, 12 inch skillet. Now this one I don't use quite as much, but you can also see in here how it's kind of it's 
kind of almost a charcoal color. It's kind of slate gray, but kind of dark. It's not that beautiful coppery color anymore, but it is seasoning very well, and it's been very well used. Um, this one here is their flat, their flat, um, I believe it's called their griddle. And this one's still got kind of that bronzy color, even though I've used it quite a bit. How the color changes is really gonna depend on what you cook in it. Um, the only thing I've ever really cooked on this are breads, such as my soft masa that you saw me making in a video. Um, I've done pancakes and things like that. And so because there's never been anything very acidic at all on here, most of that bronzy color has still been retained so far. And then this is their number eight chef skillet. It, it doesn't have the square sides. It's got kind of like the rounded, the rounded shape. This is great for cooking eggs in. Now this one you can see it, it doesn't have that bronze. It, it's actually kind of silver colored because at one point when I cooked something in here, it was something kind of acidic. And so you had kind of that chemical reaction and so it removed that coppery color. But even though it looks like it's completely stripped and it, and it might be like terrible and, and sticking and all that stuff, it is still completely nonstick. And, and over time, this will get darker and darker the more that I use it. Um, even though it looks stripped, it isn't. So they may not keep that gorgeous eye-catching color, but let me tell you, these are absolutely the best cast iron that I have ever used. Now, those of you who know me, who've been around here for a little while, you know that you don't see me promoting brands very often. It is a very rare thing um, to occur. So the fact that I am sharing about the Smithy brand um, of cast iron and, and carbon steel um, just is a testament to the fact that I think it is really amazing stuff. Um, over time, I do hope to add a few more pieces bit by bit. Um, these are not inexpensive. These are not cheap cast iron, but they are quality, the best quality I have ever used. And if you take care of it, you will be able to pass this down to a generation after generation. Um, these are, I would think, heirloom quality cast iron. And I can't testify about the carbon steel yet, although I have held it in my hand at Ashley Mercantile. And it's it's beautiful and, and pretty amazing. And like I said, I, I hope to have that farmhouse skillet one of these days. But if you would like to find out more about um, Smithy, I haven't been paid to say any of this stuff. Um, I did actually sign up to be an affiliate with them because I do actually feel that strongly about um, what they make. And so if you would like to check it out, you can find a link in the video description down below. So that is it for today, folks. Thanks for joining me here in the kitchen. If you have any questions, leave them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. So with that, I'm Constance from Cosmopolitan Cornbread and I'll talk to y'all next time.